how can you have a home team or a home game at a place that really isn't a home facility? I do not believe if they lose that game that the proposition would have passed. And I don't believe they win that game unless they make that play. I mean, that literally was a 14 point swing in a one point game. He's on the 20, he's down the sideline of the 40, he's in midfield, he's going. And to see him run down that field and score that touchdown at that moment, I was like, man, wow. We did it. And you can turn out the lights. The Cardinals are going to win it. And let's hope it transcends and the Arizona wins on Tuesday. Yes, sir. We're talking about one heartbeat, and I know our organization and this campaign had one heartbeat since Sunday afternoon. It is weird to think that, that. A, a dramatic Cardinals victory would have turned a no vote on the stadium to a yes vote, but stranger things in politics have definitely happened. Now that's a story. Where did those come from? It's down to 13,000. Right now 14, we're 313,000 to about 300,000. So we lost about six bucks. It, it becomes cliche when teams talk about needing new stadiums and, and the money flow and all that stuff. It's very important for players to have a home stadium that is home. We were limited in what we could do even at ASU at that time, you know, and, and, and even just the, just the locker rooms itself, how far they were away, and they were small, and this is a professional football team. And so we, were, we wanted to get in our own stadium where we didn't have to sit, have our fans sitting on hot bleachers and things like that. The thing that kind of really bothered me is that the NFL wouldn't let us ever have an opening game, um, you know, in early September because it was always 100 plus. It just wasn't the same at Sun Devil Stadium, being in the heat and, you know, playing one o'clock kickoffs early in the season when it's one billion degrees in the stand. That is still close. It's very, very close. And in fact, people are pouring in. Elections are tough and any politician or anyone who's covered elections will tell you, you know, there's a whole bunch of ingredients that go into whatever it is passing. Appreciate all the support we've had, but we're not done yet. And uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll get done, and then we're ready to get to work and start building those sports fields for Maricopa County youth, working on getting the Kansas City Royals here and the Texas Rangers, uh, working on improving tourism here in Arizona, and working on building a new home for the Arizona Cardinals. We had passed the bill out of the legislature, it passed by one vote out of the Arizona legislature that we could go to the ballot and vote on this new stadium. But it was more than a stadium. It was also going to double the size of the state's tourism promotion budget, which tourism is a big industry here. It was also going to provide money to renovate the spring training facilities and the Cactus League. And it was also going to provide money to build new youth sports facilities. So that helped it too, that it wasn't just seen as a giveaway to the NFL franchise, that this was going to be a tax Arizona residents most likely wouldn't have to pay and that it would fund more than just a stadium. They'd see a benefit of it. Nice to meet you. How you doing? How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice LJ Shelton, Ron McKinnon, and Corey Jones. There was a lot of a drive to try to get it over, over the edge. A, 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 lot of, a lot of work in the field. And so as we went through the fall, we had a, sort of a traditional campaign. We had grassroots. We were out there with campaign office, lots of volunteers, stickers, bumper stickers, which nobody seems to have anymore. Attention Safeway shoppers, this is Aeneas Williams of the Arizona Cardinals along with a number of my teammates and we want to say thank you for supporting the Cardinals. Yeah, we shook hands and kissed babies. Yeah, we did. It was worth it though, like, like the idea of having a new stadium, um, knowing the promise primarily, knowing the promise that was given to Mr. B for moving to St. Louis to here. I'm not a politician, don't ever want to be. Politics is kind of, uh, you know, something I know about, but I don't really, you know, get too involved in. 
But that was really interesting to go around and, and as we called it, stumping for the new stadium, which was, you know, to get the tax and to get the city to approve, you know, a new stadium. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you, Sport! <laughs> yeah, I did. Thank you! I did Thank you for <laughs> You didn't vote yes? Oh, yeah. Thank you for your support. How you doing? Real good. Thank yeah, you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for voting yes on Thrill too. Just having conversations and doing, uh, talking about it, sometimes doing interviews. But it was something that I knew the team had the presence and the ability to galvanize fans. Players knocking on doors, standing at the church down where I live. There was a church, a voting center there where people were coming to vote. And I was standing on a big rock. People were like, what are you doing out here? I'm like, I'm trying to get this stadium. I, I want to be here. I want us to have a new stadium. A lot of us players wanted a new stadium, wanted a place that we can call our own home. This is our home. And the Cardinals had something that most politicians don't, a real big national platform just days before the election. With a decision on the fate of Arizona's new stadium just two days away, the Cardinals face the favored Redskins in Week 10. Reflecting the leadership of their new head coach, Arizona played passionate, aggressive football. And then the truly remarkable happened. Aeneas Williams recovered a Stephen Davis fumble in his own end zone. I can, I can be in the middle of that play right now as I talk with you. It set the tone for that whole game. I mean, the, Washington dominated that whole game. If you look at the statistics, it's ridiculous. But they missed like four field goals and they should have scored a touchdown and ended up being a touchdown for the Cardinals. And they still only lose by one point. It was, it, it, it really felt like, it felt a little bit like fate. Second down, goal to go. Washington at the Cardinals' one-yard line. I remember I was up in the coach's booth area, and they're getting ready to score. They're getting ready to take the ball lead. The Redskins ran a, a power run up the middle. They were on the whatever it was, one-yard line, inside the one-yard line maybe. I was a short yardage goal line linebacker um, primarily. So when they got to that area, I knew I was going in the game, and me and Ronnie McKinnon are the two inside linebackers. It seemed like an inevitable touchdown against a bad football team that was struggling all season. I came in from the side, and that's when I barely clipped the ball. And then Ronnie McKinnon came in and cleaned him up. And all of a sudden, the players hit balls out, going towards the back of the end zone, Nia scoops it up. Give it to Davis again, he's bends it, he fumbles it into the end zone, the Cardinals have it. Out of there comes Aeneas Williams. And that's when I said, oh no, you know, got to find someone to block. And then I remember thinking to myself as Aeneas picked it up, shouldn't you down this? You're like halfway in the end zone and there's like a bunch of people around. End up bumping it to the referee. And whenever you see the, those stripes, right, you want to be ginger. And yet he got around whoever he needed to get around on that first one. Cardinals have it. Out of there comes Aeneas Williams with it. He's on the 10. He's on the 20. He's down the sideline of the 40. Immediately getting to the uh, near sideline and just taking off full speed. I'm jumping up. I'm like, run, Aeneas, run, you know. And, and Aeneas, you, you knew once he got in that open, they were going to catch him. I remember Aeneas running really, really, really fast. That's what I remember, blurred like, like that. 40, he's in midfield, he's going, he's going, he's going. As I'm running, I can see myself now every, I knew I needed to relax and uh, running down the sideline and then finally Aeneas getting into the end zone. 103 yards officially on that fumble recovery return. And you can turn out the lights. The Cardinals are going to win it. And let's hope it transcends and the Arizona wins on Tuesday. Yes, sir. This, this today is has got to be uh, uh, the proof that you can do it with your heart. You can do it with your heart when there's one heartbeat. And that's what I, that's what I told them. 
We need the fans one more time. We had, it, we had you today. We need you one more time. We need you one more time on Tuesday. I know that the, the, it was turning in our favor, and uh, that's a good thing. So I'm actually going to stand out here and hand out a few things to some people coming in to vote. And if it helps sway a few in the right direction and, and helps it out, then that's good. So I think we did our part this weekend, as much as I could do was this weekend getting the win, and uh, you know that was a positive for us. And then the other part about it is uh, hearing about Larry Wilson, the general manager, the late Larry Wilson, the general manager at the time, and uh, Mr. Bidwell uh, actually going out the next day uh, to measure the actual distance uh, from the end zone all the way, uh, obviously, to the other goal line. One of the coolest things about Mr. B was that he was a historian. You could sit with him and he'll just rattle off stats, dates and times. So initially, they marked the return one yard short of what the NFL record was. And there were people at the Cardinals that just felt like, you know, that there was no way. He was deeper than that. When we're looking at the film, he's deeper than that. So Dad and Larry Wilson went out there with a tape measure. They measured it off and then called the league and got them to, uh, to reverse the statistic and clarify the statistic, really. Uh, clarify it to its actual depth in the uh, end zone. And so that, that record is now uh, one that, that Aeneas shares. Those little things let you know that it was meant to be. Because had that not happened, you know, there's another version of that, that how that feels in the Valley coming back or being here and seeing that, you know, the fans are totally disappointed. It's a sour taste to vote for. And if they can't get a win, why would we? And just that little bit could have moved the needle. I absolutely believe they needed that play to win. And I think they needed a win to, to kind of push it over the edge. When you look at what the final ballot was, which was something crazy, like 50 point, 2% to 49.8% or whatever the final breakdown was. I mean, it was by the slimmest of margins that that had passed. Great, thanks. Hello. I am too, this is big, this is big. We feel very good and we're gonna thank everybody in the room. You know, I, I can't look back and say, for sure we would not have won the vote without that win, but it sure as hell helped. Plan. Uh, you know, we had to constantly adjust it as different challenges arose, and uh, I'm really proud of the effort that everybody uh, uh, made on this. But most importantly, the voters, your listeners, sports fans, football fans, Cardinal fans, all responded, turned out the vote, and uh, that's why we stand here the night before. Um, you know, the final votes are tallied uh, in a position that looks very favorable that Prop 302 will pass tomorrow. Michael, inside your heart, man, I know the hours of tireless work inside that thing in your chest right now. What are you feeling? Uh, it's beaten to one beat, and it's the same heartbeat that uh, Dave McGinnis was talking about. In 2000, we voted on that. They thought that the economic impact, the, the, the experts that did the economic analysis, thought the economic impact would be $3 billion over the first 30 years. Well, we're only halfway there at this point and it's already exceeded $5 billion. So the economic impact of State Farm Stadium is just, it's a true economic engine. Uh, because of all the different games and events and, and because of the impact that the Cardinals are having there as well. I think that changed everything. And for the state, I mean, obviously you get Super Bowls here, you get Final Fours here, um, you've gotten you know international soccer games here, all this stuff. I do think it's drawn attention uh, on events that wouldn't have gotten it. They did get a Super Bowl at Sun Devil Stadium once, but I know that the NFL never would have gone back to Sun Devil Stadium for a Super Bowl, so that means something. What we did was really monumental, and then to be a part of getting that vote to pass was, was pretty cool to know that we were a big part of that team staying in the Valley and now being, you know, they're, they're the Arizona Cardinals and the fans have, have bought in and they love that organization now. There are more fans of the Red Sea, you know, than ever before. And I think that is one of the greatest things because when you have those people behind you, is there feels like there's nothing that can stop you. And so I think that was one of the greatest things that happened for the team. For the Arizona Cardinals to make a decision to come here and to end up getting all the benefits and the promises that was made, well deserved to the Big Wheels fan. 
and they have their own stadium. And I think that is the part where you say, if you do your part right, and the moments are right, then a lot of good things will happen. And I love to share with the current players, our preparation as players has a huge influence on just the whole vibe of a city, or in this case, a state. And I know sometimes we as players may not think like that, but when we win a game, it's like to the fans, it's like to the citizens, we won.